Thank you so much, Titus, for that very warm introduction. And thank you, Jam, and all the Sunday School team for um, that wonderful performance and presentation for the mothers. You have made us enjoy, you have made us cry, you have made us laugh, and you have really made our day. And I just want to thank um, uh, Jam and all the Sunday School teachers and volunteers for all your hard work. You know, they have been really working hard, um, managing and coordinating with the children. It's a tough task, but I just thank God for each one of their life, uh, their dedication and devotion for our children. God bless you all. So last Sunday, um, after our praise and worship, a time was open for a prophetic word. And um, Apang from the online attendee gave a passage from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. But the verse from 28 struck me. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That was just for me because I was so overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed and burdened at that point of time because I was sitting here because my husband told me that I'm going to speak on Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> And I was not ready for it because speaking like this is not my strength. It is a big stress for me. So I was overwhelmed. And in Psalms 121, it says, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And he who watches over you does not slumber nor sleep. He knows my situation and God had to send this message to me through his servant. Weary mother, come to me. I will give you rest. And this is going to my, this is going to be my message today. And so here I am, a failed uh, mother, an imperfect mother trying to speak to you on Mother's Day. But since this is a family, I'm sure that you all will overlook my mistake and my limitations, and I take great comfort in that. And so if you are like me, God is calling us, come to me, weary mother, I will give you rest. But before I continue with this message, I want to say that all of us who are sitting here and who have even joined us online, we all have mothers. We all have mothers. Some of them may be living with us still. Some of them might have already gone. But some of us have had a very uh, great memories about our mothers. Uh, in fact, um, one of our friends texted me last, last week that um, she was missing her mother because she passed away at this time three years ago. And so we have fond memories about our mothers, but some might have difficulties with our moms. But the truth is that whatever is the situation, whatever is the cases, it is our mothers who brought us into this world. And today, we want to remember our mothers and we want to thank God for bringing us into this world. I also want to um, acknowledge that for some of us, Mother's Day is not a happy day because you are yet to receive that blessing of a child in your marriage. A dinge of burden that you carry because you are not able to conceive. There are many uh, who want to conceive desperately, but they do not. And I don't know why, but I know one thing for sure is that God loves you. God loves you. Your value and your word is not um, uh, determined by your ability to have children. Your value does not depend on how many children you have, but 
God loves you because you are created in the image of God. You are engraved on the bombs of God. And because of that, you are so special, so valuable, and so precious to the Lord. And so I want to tell you that you are so precious. You are so precious. I also want to tell you that you are also in that large list of women of faith who could not conceive for a very long time. There are women in the Bible who are unable to, uh, who were barren for a very, very long time. And it starts with Sarah, the wife of Abraham. She was barren all throughout. And, but God enabled her and it was even past her, uh, her childbearing age, but God enabled her. Rebecca, Isaac's wife, was infertile for a long time. Rachel, wife of Jacob, was barren for a long time. Ruth did not conceive in, in, his, in her first marriage, but when she married uh, Boaz, she gave birth to uh, Obed, and that was the, um, that, were, that forms the lineage from where our Lord Jesus came. What about Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist? She was also barren for a long time. And so we notice in the, in the Bible that these childless women are often the most righteous women. They are the women of faith. They are the matriarchs of faith. And so today I want to tell you that God has kept you and reserved you for a greater blessings. Do you believe that? Shall we say amen? There could be many reasons why you are, uh, you are not able to be mother yet, but I just want to draw three things. I just want to draw out three things. Number one, it could be that God is preparing to be a mother in future. God may be preparing you to be a mother in future. The doctor may say that you are not going to conceive for whatever reason, but that does not mean that you are not going to conceive. God may be preparing you to bring that miracle child through your faith. It could be that God uh, wants you to bring that, um, that miracle child. And uh, I want to take the example of uh, Anil and Mitlesh, our Hindi uh, church pastor. They were not able to have children for six good years. And by, in God's sovereign plan, they were blessed with their third child just last month. And our God is able. He is faithful. We had many other stories and testimony in our church. There was uh, the Smita and Prasad. They were not able to have children for 15 years. They had tried all possible ways, but they were not able to. But God, in his sovereign time, blessed them with a daughter after 15 years of marriage. And so I want to encourage you that God may be preparing you for something mir miraculous. And the second thing is that perhaps God is preparing you to be the foster parents or, or adoptive parents. There are many children who are in need of godly homes and godly parents, and you may be one of them. And thirdly, and this could be the, um, the highest calling, it could be that God wants you to be available for a specific calling. For a specific calling, it could be that... Uh, it could be that God wants you to be, uh, to be um, uh, available for something so special that your greater availability is, um, is required. And if so, God will equip you and give you the grace and strength. Perhaps God is preparing you and equipping you and training you at this point of time. So I would like to encourage all the women here, present here, or um, even joining online who are waiting for children not to be disheartened, but trust for that time for God to fulfill a greater testimony through your story of faith. But when God bless us, 
with his blessings, with, his, with, with the gifts of children, it is a big responsibility. It's a great responsibility and that wears us down. It wears us down. We can't even enjoy the blessing because we have too many things to worry and care about. And so what wears us down? What wears down the mothers? Number one, expectations. 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 Mother faces expectations from every angle, from their children, from their husband, from their extended families, and our, our society uh, did not even make our things, our condition better. Society labels us that we are um, neglecting our children when we are working mothers. That's me. <laughs> and you are lazy if you are staying home, not going to office, staying home and looking after your children. You are lazy mother. You are boisting your children if you feed them and give them junk food or the processed food. By this time, all our children would have died. <laughs> you are spoiling your children if you allow them and let them watch video where you attend to your tons of household chores and, and your laundries. You are putting your children in danger if you um, allow, uh, let them play unattended or if you are keeping your watchful eye on them all the time, then you are such a possessive mother. And then you must also read storybook to them every day so that they will develop your, their imagination and their vocabulary and whatnot. And so you, if you're not able to do all of this, what a failure you are. You are a big failure. And so family, your expectation on mothers wears them down. Expectations. And what's the other thing that wears them down? It's the works and the responsibilities. The works and responsibilities. And that's exactly what happened to me last week. I was supposed to run the household chores where my uh, niece was giving her exams. I have to also fulfill my responsibilities at work because they are all time bound. And at the same time, I want to keep things in order at home. And um, on the top of that, I also have to run outside for all kinds of paperwork in the bank, for the car and whatnot. Plus, I want to look after my children. I want to attend to their needs because I love them. And so I was running and swinging like a ball. And at the end, I was so stressed out, so stressed out. And what happened? I sinned and I just kept, I just stopped there. And my, uh, my daughter, one of my daughters read my script and then she asked me, what happened after that? What scene? So <laughs> I got upset and angry at everybody because I was too tired. So works and responsibilities wear us down. And what about the next one? It's our own dreams and ambitions, our, our desires. Every parent wants their children to do well in life, in their career, in music, in studies, um, in, in relationships, in godliness, in everything you name them. And so we go extra miles and do whatever possible we can for them. We put them in tuition, we fixed up online classes for them and whatever, every bizarre thing we will do for them because we really want them, want them to do well. But what happened to our children? They're only interested on their mobile phones. And so the parents are devastated. They're frustrated and don't know what to do. And the same goes with the parents. The parents want to upgrade their lifestyle. And so from the whatever phone, they want to go to iPhone 15 Pro or whatever. And from the uh, hatchback car to, they want to upgrade to the sedan or SUV or whatever UV. And they want to also buy a new, a new house. And so our dreams, our wishes, you know, our desires, because we want to upgrade our lifestyle, we have to work extra hours to earn that extra money. And when we come home, we are so tired and exhausted. And so our own dreams and desires weigh us down. And the greatest guilt 
comes from within ourselves as we never feel like we measure up to what it means to be a good mother the sense of failure the sense of failure weigh us down and so there are many situations that continuously worry us and rob us of the joy of all god's blessings in our lives the expectations the the worries the the works and the responsibilities the dreams and ambition continuously weigh us down and so what should the um weary mother do what should a weary mother do this takes me to the text that i got on last sunday morning Matthew 11 verse 28 says come to me all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest come to me weary mother I will give you rest that means we need to readjust our values and our priorities we need to readjust our values and our priorities that calls for an action There are so many things that mounts up on us every day but in the midst of all these Jesus is calling us come to me come to me I will give you rest when we are stressed Jesus calls us to check our priorities whether we are doing the right priority there can be three kinds of stress it could be the physical stress um Uh, it may be due to overwork or not getting uh, enough sufficient rest but this can be replenished quickly or easily but there can also be emotional stress and uh, and spiritual fatigue you know tired emotion and and uh, tired feeling and spiritual dryness these are deeper we may need a vacation we may go for our holiday it may refresh us for some time but that's not going to last that's not going to last we may go to goa for two weeks for a holiday when we come back those problems are still going to be there we are still going to face the pressure and so going for vacation or holiday can sorry cannot permanently erase and resolve our our emotional stress and spiritual dryness we need relationship with god we need a relationship with god and so when we are weary and burdened it signals us that our priorities are not right something is amiss it means readjusting our values by coming to jesus seeking god intently it may even mean taking a day or a two off and going for a retreat it is not that vacation type of uh, thing it's a spiritual retreat seeking god intently and so what does a weary mother do a weary mother readjust her priorities and values secondly weary mother goes in the presence of god actually today my message is a continuation of from the prophetic word that I, that we have received last sunday last sunday when shalida came up here she gave this passage from psalm 16 verse 11 there is fullness of joy in the presence of god there is fullness of joy in the presence of god what brings worries and burden to us obviously it is the things of the world It is very clear from the story of these two sisters Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10 verses 41 to 42 Jesus said to Martha 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 you are worried and upset about many things you are worried and upset about many things but few things are needed or indeed only one Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her we are worried and upset about many motherly things many motherly things things of the world but all these things are not really necessary uh, jesus said few things are needed and so there are only few things that are required and even out of this few things there's just one thing that really really matters and that is being with jesus that is being with jesus 
we've heard about this so many times. And so this is just a reminder we know about it in our head, but it is so difficult for us to really practice it. Jesus invites us to come to him, lay down all our futile efforts and listen to him like Mary does. He wants us to shift our priorities from things to him. Shift our priorities from things to Jesus because there is fullness of joy in his presence. Now, what, does, what should a weary mother do? The third thing that I want to bring out is a weary mother prays to God. A weary mother prays to God. Now, this reminds us about the story of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Um, for those of us who are not very familiar with the story, most of us, all of us are or maybe knowing, Elkanah, there was a man called Elkanah, and he had two wives, Hannah and Benina. Benina gave birth to many sons and daughters, but Hannah had a great problem. And what was that problem? That was her barrenness. She was not able to conceive. She was not able to have children. And that was one of her greatest problems. And on the top of that, her rival, Benina, provoked her all the time. She looked down upon Hannah and provoked her all the time. And so Hannah was a woman in pain, in trouble, and in anguish. But how did she handle her trouble? How did she respond to her uh, problem? Hannah just to go to the Almighty God and pour out all her pain and anguish to God. Instead of me telling about a story, I want us to read from the text 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 20, if we can project it. Let's read this passage. I will read it. It's a bit long. 1 Samuel 1, verse 10 to 20. And um, we just want to meditate on this and let this be our prayer too. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord weeping bitterly and she made a vow saying lord almighty if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son she prayed specifically for a son i realize that now mm -hmm. then i will give him to the lord for all the days for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head Verse 12, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. And so Hannah brought all her pain and her sorrow to the Lord. She was pouring out her soul to, to God. Do not, verse 16, do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something. That means Hannah might not been, uh, she might not have been eating. She might be fasting and praying because it's mentioned she went away and ate something. So she must be fasting and praying and her face was no longer downcast. I really like this sentence. That is the result of prayer. That's the power of prayer. She went inside with a heart full of pain and trouble and anguish. And as she poured out in the presence of God, she came out with her face lifted up. And that's what prayer can do to us. That's the result of prayer, the power of prayer. And I really like this. As we continue, 
early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel saying, because I asked the Lord for him. How I wish to be like Hannah, Samuel had a great mom, a praying mother, and this is my desire for myself and for all the mothers in DCC to grow in the virtue of praying. In 2 Timothy verse 1, Paul said to Timothy that the sincere faith of his grandmother Lois was passed on to his mother Eunice and was seen in him. And so what we have, we can pass down to our children, to our generation, but we cannot pass on what we don't have. The 16th president of United States, um, Abraham Lincoln, the famous president said, no one is poor who has a godly mother. No one is poor who has a godly mother. He said that the prayers of his mother have followed him and clung to him all his life. So prayer is such a legacy, true, um, a, a great legacy that we can build and pass on to our generations. In my conclusion, I want us to remember a few things. Number one is that our word and our value does not depend on how many children we have. It does not depend on our ability to, uh, uh, to reproduce. We are all created in the image of God and God loves us because we are made in his image. We are precious, so precious and valuable to God. Number two is if we have a great problems like Hannah, Perhaps God is preparing you for a greater blessing. And so let us not be disheartened and discouraged because greater blessing may be on the way. And thirdly, let us exchange all our pressures of expectations, our responsibilities and our ambitions with the rest of God. We cannot raise up our children with our own strength and ability. We cannot raise up our children with our own wisdom without the help of God. And so let's not stress ourselves, but we can just pray for them. Perhaps that's the only thing that we can leave uh, for our children. And so let's, uh, let's not be stressed out. Just like Timothy caught that fire, that sorry, that fade from her mother, who was, uh, which was passed down to her mother um, uh, from her, from his grandmother, let us embrace and build virtues that we can pass down to our generations. This also reminds me of uh, the promise of God for our children in Isaiah 54 verse 13. It says that your children will be taught by the Lord. Great will be their peace. This really comforted me because I know that I do not have the ability to teach my children. Yes, some of us may have some knowledge, some skills or some arts to, you know, teach our children. But I know that I don't have that ability. And so this passage came like a big um, promise and comfort for me and I really take this word by word that your children will be taught by the Lord great will be their peace we just want to say thank you Jesus for that and lastly let us readjust our priorities and our values the only thing that matter is being with Jesus like Hannah, let us learn to take all our pain, our disappointment, our anguish, and all our weaknesses to the Lord Almighty. And God will lift us up. Thank you all for listening.